Hello, good evening, and welcome to the One Class channel. My name is Fajiri Rome. I'm an honors bachelor of science graduate, currently working towards medical school. Today I'll be doing my best to go over some commonly asked chemistry questions at both the high school and college levels. If you need some extra homework help or some tutoring, or just some further clarification on what was covered today, please check out the links in the description below. That way we can get one of our experts to be able to help you as soon as we can. With that being said, let's kick it off for today with our first question for the evening. And we have for question one. It says the cyanate ion, OCN, and fulminate ion, CNO, share the same three atoms. Okay? So OCN and CNO, they share the same three atoms, but have vastly different properties. The cyanide ion is stable, while the fulminate ion is unstable and forms explosive compounds. So we want to draw the Lewis structure for fulminate ion, including possible resonance forms, and use a formal charge to explain why this is less stable and therefore more reactive than the cyanate ion. So with that being said, I would actually start by drawing the cyanate ion, the best Lewis structure I can think of. So because they have the same thing, we can actually put the same information in. Each one has an oxygen, a carbon, and a nitrogen. So oxygen, based on it being on row, sorry, on column 16, has six electrons. Carbon, column 14, four electrons. And nitrogen, column 15, Five electrons. When I say this, I mean in regards to their valence electrons. So with that being said, we have four plus five plus six plus this minus here, which counts as one electron. Sorry about this. It seems that I'm experiencing a little issue with my pen. So I'll just keep explaining because what we're going to do here is put in the calculator just to make sure that we have the right amount of electrons for each one. So we should be getting four plus five plus six plus one because of the minus right here. Perfect. And with that we have, so it's really just five plus five plus six. And yep, 16 electrons each for both forms. And now let's see if we can draw a structure, or at least what we think it would be. So O, C, N, we have O, C, and N. Just draw one bond between them. Oxygen right now needs one more bond because right now it's sitting as a um, one elect unpaired electron. Carbon, two unpaired electrons, nitrogen, two unpaired electrons. So there has to be a way to balance this out. The good news is that because there's a minus, actually, what we can do is add that probably to the nitrogen side, allowing us then to be able to now form a double bond here and a double bond here to where we can get O, C, N, okay? And mind you, this is just one possible Lewis structure. There could be other forms as well for the OCN. Uh, but let's for, check the formal charges. So first, we make sure we have 16 electrons. Let's see. We have eight, four bonds in total, so that's eight electrons. And four lone pairs, that's another eight. So this is good. For the formal charge, oxygen likes to be like that. That is net charge zero when it has two lone pairs and two bonds. Carbon, when they're all bonds. That's his net charge of zero. Nitrogen is only when it has one lone pair and three bonds. But here, it's replaced a bond with a lone pair. So this nitrogen is currently where the minus will be, okay? This is a possible Lewis structure for it. Another Lewis structure would be if I shifted a lone pair into a bond with a carbon from the nitrogen and kicked out a bond and turned into a lone pair to the oxygen. So what I'm doing here is this. Let 
now the nitrogen is now it's um, net um, formal charge of zero but the oxygen now because now it's replaced one bond with the lone pair this is where the minus will be now so these are both viable forms of this Lewis structure there's probably more out there but these ones I would see as the most stable I'm picturing most likely the oxygen one where the oxygen has a negative only because of the electronegativity and the affinity um, for electrons I feel like the oxygen is more likely to take on the extra electrons than the nitrogen but this is what I'm thinking for cyanate okay now for fulminate on the other hand we have CNO that is the order so carbon now nitrogen is in the middle and we have the oxygen okay so similar structure but now the oxygen same start where it needs one more the carbon is like that because it needs three more and the nitrogen in the middle is right now sharing two of its five electrons so three four five so here an issue already presents itself how can nitrogen form bonds to where it can satisfy both for the fulminate ion it really can't without changing its formal charge because as you can see if I do the same double bond with the nitrogen and I just send these two over to form that triple bond even with the carbon right and then we also have to add that extra electron uh, because that's what the 16 would be what I would end up with is something very similar and yes this does work but you'll see how the formal charges plays a role. So now the carbon has, in a sense, taken the nitrogen role. And you'll see through this picture that it's still going to be a total net charge of just minus one. But now we just have more things that aren't zero compared to the cyanate ion. So here, nitrogen, as we saw, this right here is where it likes to be. But here, it replaced a bond. Sorry. It replaced a lone pair with a bond meaning that it lost one electron as it's now going more positive so this nitrogen here in the middle is a plus the oxygen on the other hand this one right here is still this form where it's a minus because it now replaced uh, a bond with a lone pair so we have a plus and minus so right now we're at zero but the carbon actually has now also replaced a bond with a lone pair and this is where our third minus is. We have two minuses and one plus. And frankly enough, this is one of the best pictures I can draw. I could draw another resonance structure to where, you know, we do the same thing where we move the bonds around. But carbon will always have at least one, at least to fill the octet rule, it needs at least one lone pair. Because if I try to even move that lone pair towards the middle, I will break the octet rule. So this is an even worse form but this is also a possible resonance structure because now the oxygen here is going to be at zero because now it's satisfied the two bonds and two lone pairs. But the carbon, funny enough, is now at going to be at two minus because now it's replaced two bonds with two lone pairs and the nitrogen is still at the plus. And there's other ways I can move this as well, but the point is the carbon just gets more and more of a negative formal charge. These two, as you can see from the cyanate, they're relatively okay. It's not that bad. The nitrogen and the oxygen, although inconvenience, they're more willing to take on the job because they have higher electronegativity. But this, in this case here, with the fulminate, the carbon is forced to, even when it doesn't want to. There's no way I can draw this to where I can get the carbon to have even a formal charge of neutral or zero. So this right here should be answering why fulminate ion is less stable and more reactive than the cyanate. Because as you can see here, even in my best structure, I still have it to where the formal charges are going off of zero. I don't have any zeros in my formal charges when it comes to these individual ions. And even, even when I do have a formal charge when it comes to these individual atoms, it comes at the cost of having a greater number of formal charge on something else. So, let's see what our colleague says in this case. 
So what they've drawn here, CNO, this is the um, fulminate ion. I didn't bother drawing the last one they have here where carbon is at three minus because at that point, all you're doing is just making the situation worse. Carbon is now literally replaced three of its bond with three lone pairs, something that it rarely ever wants to do. So I drew the first two here, as you can see, where we had the minus one, plus one, and minus one, and the minus two, plus one is zero. So even as they're moving things around, it just won't work to where they can get that really nice, stable structure. So with that being said, they do explain more about the form of charge. And this is why the fulminate ion compared to the cyanate ion is just less stable. Because even in this one, in its worst day, where the nitrogen takes everything and the oxygen has a triple bond, Yes, the nitrogen is now at two minus and the oxygen is at a plus, but overall, this is still better than what we're getting there, or at least the same type of, um, I guess, an instability. But here, at least we can achieve this form here when it comes to cyanate. While formulate doesn't have a form like that, it's where the formal charges feel at most ease. So with that, this is correct. And I'll say this is more of a conceptual question as well. So we have to really analyze what it means to have formal charges that are near zero. So overall, the more stable uh, a molecule, it's usually related to how many formal charges can be just kept at zero. If it cannot be kept at zero, no matter how you switch it around, that is not a very stable molecule. So let's move on to question number two.